PCBs stand for polychlorinated biphenyls. So for this, we're just going to call them PCBs. PCBs belong to a broad family of man-made organic chemicals. PCBs are known to be toxic to humans and other organisms. So a little history. PCBs were first introduced or manufactured in the 1920s. They were considered invaluable in electrical equipment and in buildings and in machinery. PCBs were used because of their fire resistance, chemical stability, and electrical insulating properties. They were also used as plasticizers and paints and plastics and rubber products, and in pigments and dyes and carbonless copy paper, and many other industrial applications. Within only a few generations, PCBs had spread all over the world. They were found in both animals and humans, as well as in food products. Consumers did not know that PCBs were harmful to people. That is, until a serious poisoning incident happened in Japan in 1968. This incident shed new light on PCBs and prompted much further research. By 1979, as a result of that research, the manufacturing of PCBs was banned, not just in the United States, but also internationally. So if PCBs were banned back in 1979, why is there a need to make laws about them now? Although PCBs are no longer intentionally added to products manufactured in the U.S., they can still be and are inadvertently created when high heat and chlorine are used during some manufacturing processes. These inadvertently generated PCBs are found in some consumer products today. Also, PCBs can be released into the environment from poorly maintained, hazardous waste sites that contain PCBs. Illegal or improper dumping of PCBs wastes, leaks or releases from electrical transformers containing PCBs, and disposal of PCBs containing consumer products into municipal or other landfills not designed to handle hazardous waste. PCBs may also be released into the environment by the burning of some wastes in municipal and industrial incinerators. To explain it a bit more, here are some other facts about PCBs. They may remain for long periods of time, cycling between the air and the water and the soil and the biota, that is the animal and plant life. And PCBs can be carried long distances and have been found in snow and seawater in areas far from where they were released into the environment. Consequently, PCBs are found all over the world. In general, the lighter the form of PCBs, the further it can be transported from the source of contamination. Perhaps you have seen these signs posted on the shores of our Washington waterways. Washington is not alone. Many states have established fish and wildlife consumption advisories because of PCBs. It is important to note that the levels of PCBs found in products tested are unlikely to pose an immediate threat to human health. The concern is that the small amounts of PCBs released to the environment from thousands or millions of these products can build up through the food chain, eventually posing risks for people exposed by eating fish or causing health effects for other top-level consumers, such as orcas. This is called biomagnification, and here is an illustration of how it happens. PCBs are released from multiple sources into the environment. PCBs also accumulate in the leaves and above ground parts of plants and food crops. Eventually, they end up in our waterways. These small amounts of PCBs are absorbed by phytoplankton and then zooplankton, who of course eat the phytoplankton. This is where it's easier for us to see the biomagnification process. The small fish who eats the zooplankton doesn't just eat one. This small fish must eat millions of the zooplankton to survive, and now the small fish contains multiplied amounts of PCBs in comparison to the PCBs in one zooplankton. In turn, the larger fish also must eat thousands of smaller fish to survive, thereby causing it to contain amounts of PCBs that are multiplied by the thousands in comparison to the amount of PCBs in the smaller fish. When top-level consumers eat these fish, those PCBs are biomagnified, and they are now at much higher levels. Replace the orca in this picture with a human, and now you can see why these signs of fish consumption limits are posted. PCBs have demonstrated that once they are released into the environment, they may remain there for generations and build up over time. 
When the concentration of harmful toxic chemicals in an organism builds up, it is called bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation happens over time as more PCBs are introduced. The longer the fish or the human are exposed to PCBs through the air, skin contact, or food and water, the more PCBs bioaccumulate. To summarize, PCBs biomagnify as they move through the food chain, and they bioaccumulate in an organism over time. When we know the risks of PCBs and we make the best purchasing choices, we influence businesses to manufacture their products in a way that will not produce PCBs. So in this way, together, we can clean up and keep our waterways healthy.